Hello and welcome to Floodland. This video is kindly sponsored by Raven's Court and Play On. And if you would like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. And this is a kind of like a world ending city builder where you have to rebuild society and try to survive against all the odds. You have to scavenge for food and a variety of different resources as you do. And you also, of course, have to make sure that your citizens are happy with your decisions. There's a number of different story elements that you're going to have to contend with as well. And now here's the, here's the really big kicker here. The game has just undergone its largest update in a long time. They've been working on it for over four months and there are fixes for basically every single thing that people have been complaining about. There are new factions, new leaders, clans, new starting layouts, new map islands, new laws with which you can obviously determine how you know people deal with various things within your society. You have new notes, new events, new notes as in world building and so on and so forth. And they also added a new building as well. Among other things, they've actually made the performance better. They've just done absolutely everything they can to improve the experience overall. So it's clear that they're listening to the community, which is absolutely fantastic. Love to see that. And this is obviously developed by Vile Monarch, and we know them from, well, other titles. And to be fair, they've always done a great job, in my opinion. Anyway, we have a massive, massive array of different clans that we can choose here. They all have massively different stats as well. And you can see here we've got clan traits. You have to choose, um, you know, one of these, obviously, leader trait very much specific to the leader and then you obviously have a clan trait that is generalized so you kind of you, you kind of want to make sure that you're picking something that kind of resonates with you as much as possible so for me personally I'm probably going to be going for this fellow because he has the ability for searching and collecting resources is 50% faster for all clans for me personally I like that because I don't like having to take a long time collecting resources and searching is an extremely important part of the game. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Also, there's obviously difficulty settings that you can choose. You can just follow the story if you want to have super simple stuff and not too much of a challenge. Or you can just go for a bit more of a normal difficulty, then hard, and then obviously insane. So if you want to go for that, then you can if you want to. There's a tutorial here. I'm probably... I'm probably going to leave the tutorial on. I, I've played before, so I kind of know what to do, but I'm going to leave it on just so that you can see exactly what's going on with the game, and they're probably going to do a better job of letting you know what's going on than I would, and otherwise we're going to start with the prologue as well. So let's just get into it, and as you can see, every playthrough is different. Every time you start playing, it's slightly different. Experiment with different strategies. And that's the point. As I said before, it's basically a collapsed society. Everyone has now splintered off into different factions, and you're going to have to deal with, well, every single responsibility that comes along with that. When I was 15, I buried my sister with my own hands. Some think the event was the cause, but it all began before. I remember the times of confusion and strife. I heard the silence that drowned the screams. The event it was simply the final blow. Some say those in charge failed us. Others, that we are all to blame. But we dwell too much on what's behind. I say, let's focus on what lies ahead. And ahead, I see hard-working hands building houses. I see strong backs carrying food. And smiles. The smiles that greet newcomers. I cried when my sister died. And now we mourn our friend as she is taken by the water. But tomorrow, I don't fear tomorrow I'll be crying. Because I know if we make it, we can all sit back and laugh.
Now, in my opinion, that's actually a wonderful voiceover, super atmospheric, very immersive, and the voice actor does an absolutely fantastic job. So they really, they really picked someone very good there. Anyway, here we go. Obviously, they're going to tell us all about the uh, camera controls. It's all very simple, very you know standard city builder kind of stuff, which is perfectly fine. Obviously, you have the time management here as well, so you're going to be able to pause anytime you want. You can also fast forward things however you like as well. There is actually a place of interest here already. The game starts off paused as well, which is actually really nice. A nice little quality of life feature there because you obviously don't want to have time running away with you when, it, when you're kind of getting, you know, a bit of a handle on things. And you can see here, so when I select various things, you may have the opportunity to send your citizens over there to inspect it. They're going to inspect it. They're either going to search it. They're going to explore throughout the place. And that's exactly what you can do. And now you can see here, we can potentially go and inspect these building remnants. So for example, perhaps the residents of their descendants are still alive somewhere in the area. The building is abandoned, but it's still worth our attention. That means approaching it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So if I select this, I already know how to do that. But if I select this, as you can see, storage workers are on their way. So what they're going to do is they're going to go over there and they're going to inspect all that stuff. And then they're going to be gaining these resources as a result of their explorations. Now, obviously, as time goes on, we are obviously going to establish base camp. We need to obviously do that. And my attention is needed there. Um, but we're obviously just going to then do a little bit of searching. So we're going to enable these little search areas. Now, these search areas are temporary for the moment. They will remain until every single resource in their circles has been harvested. So you don't need to worry about placing them wherever because they will disappear after the resources have been gathered. So you can just place them wherever you like and then when your people are done collecting then you can place others somewhere else if you want to. There is also a research tree as well, by the way. We don't currently have access to that just yet, but they are very generous with the amount of resource points or research points you're going to be able to receive from completing various quest objectives and indeed just generally making your way through the world. And here we go. We've arrived. This is where the scouts sent up those flares. It looks like they were right. They found the signs I had told them to look for. I must say, I'm a touch nervous. We're going to try restarting civilization, or at least give it that initial spark. However, this isn't something people do every day, you know. Speaking of, this is where we're going to launch our search for the pre-event Rebirth Power Plant. It was top of the line just before everything collapsed. For over 20 years, only scavengers roamed this place, setting up temporary camps from time to time, probably unaware of the treasures to be found here. Now, I have the most trustworthy intel that the plant is somewhere in the area. First though, I'm hungry. I guess everyone is. We can't jumpstart civilization on an empty stomach. Alright, so we need to gather safe food supplies now. So now here's the, here's the deal with this game. You have risky food, and then you have safe food. Two different categories, and you actually have the ability to produce safe food from risky food. So that's something that you're going to have to, you know, bear in mind. So as it, as it says here, we need to build an infrastructure to rest rest upon the, the new civilization. We will need to build it one tent at a time. So that's what we need to do. So obviously, I'm just playing the prologue now, but you can dive in if you don't want to do that. You can literally just disable the prologue, disable all the tutorials, and then you can just dive in straight away. But for me personally, I think it's a good idea to not do that, at least for your first playthrough. Anyway, here we go. What is this? An encyclopedia clipping with a handwritten note. Okay, I'm not sure if I need to read all of this because it seems like a lot of scientific jargon for my liking. And there is just a handwritten note at the bottom there that says, we don't need to understand God's work to appreciate its beauty. And that's the thing. There's a lot of these kinds of lore notes that you're going to be able to find, which fill in the backstory of the various denizens of the land. And well, you're going to attempt to try and find as much of that as you can. There's even a water tower here. So for example, as you can see, I only have 40 little bits of water here. And if I go over here to search this water tower, then we are obviously going to be getting a little bit more of that. Seems like it's going to be enough for a while. Now that we know we won't starve, we can get to jumpstarting civilization. It almost feels like a biogenesis out here in these untamed flooded lands. 
Oh, whoops, sorry. Abiogenesis is a fancy biology word that means the beginning of life. I'm almost embarrassed to use such big words, but sometimes they're just too perfect to not use. Alright, well, Nicole is apparently a very brainy person, and I am certainly not, so this is going to be interesting. Anyway, the scouts we've sent to explore this area moved on to continue their expedition. We should find them and see what kind of information they might have obtained. I need to talk to them to see if they've discovered any details about the power plant. However, so far, everything looks good. It's definitely the right spot. One step at a time, though. The scouts are currently holed up in some of the derelicts around here. Let's go get them. All right, so you can actually zoom out a massive amount here as well, by the way. As you can see, look at this. This is an insanely large map. Look at this. I'm going around the outskirts of it right now, and literally, it is massive. Um, and you only get a relatively small portion of it at the moment. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to get the ability to explore more as time goes on. So you're just going to have to unlock the research available. And then you're going to be able to explore other things to your heart's content. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm literally just going to just going to um, activate searches and things. And then we can also go and search in the mist as well. Because this is obviously kind of like a fog of war situation where we then have the ability to... Uh, you know, go out there and, and see what's actually going on, you know what I mean? Uncover the map and see what's happening. I don't think we're going to have any issues in regards to aggressive things, but we are going to have things like this, where we have building remnants and we can search for people, as you can see right there. We can also approach the decayed ruins, which is going to give us some rubbish and so on and so forth. And now, what's really cool about this game as well is that whenever one of your scouts or whenever one of your people find something of interest, they actually let up a flare into the air. And obviously, if you're not listening to me or you're playing the game and you have nothing on in the background or anything like that you're going to be able to hear that flare even if you're looking at something else so for example if i was over here doing something and i hear the flare i think that's a super clever feature because it basically says look at this you know that something has happened something is going on here and they do that through an audio cue i think that's really cool also obviously they do have a really obvious visual effect too so it's quite nice i like that a great deal all right, so, ooh, look at this. We're actually going to get valuable artifacts of the world from before the event. Electronics, machines, blueprints, schematics. Study them to reclaim some of the forgotten knowledge. Yeah, so forgotten knowledge is the research tree, or shall we say the currency for the research tree, and you're then going to be able to unlock additional things as a result of, you know, getting that going, you know, getting that all unlocked and everything. Okay, so I'm actually just going to do a little bit more searching here. Just want to try and make sure that I have a huge amount of resources for the upcoming builds, because of course, we are eventually going to build tents, of course. And uh, there we go. Chief, we found what you'd call a prepper cache in one of the buildings. There's some equipment in the first room and a headless skeleton holding a shotgun. It seems the corpse is guarding the entrance to the basement. We might be able to find a lot of equipment and food there. The whole place looks quite eerie, so we chose to come to you and ask what to do rather than act on our own. What do you think of it all? Hmm. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> this. Yeah. This is a. This is dangerous. Okay. This is real dangerous. So, unfortunately, we do not have this specialization, which is exactly the point. You can get this specialization in your research tree. But of course, I don't have that at the moment. But if you have Erudition 2, then you're going to be able to take someone that knows about that, and then they're going to be able to check for traps and so on. Take only things you can extract safely and leave the basement untouched. Yeah, we're going to do that. Ooh, 10 people got annoyed. Oh, okay. I probably should have just left in general, probably. Or maybe I should have just charged in there. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I just know that in my previous playthrough, I chose a different option. I'm not going to spoil what I chose, but I chose a different option and it didn't go so well. <laughs> Let's just say that. No. All right. So, uh, yeah, this is almost going to be done in a second. And there are renewable resources as well, by the way. So, for example, these berries, they are a renewable resource. They're not infinite, but they are renewable. In other words, they will come back after a certain period of time. Um, so, yeah, we're actually just going to go and send some people to search over here. Because I'm assuming that that's where our scouts are. And then we're going to be able to uh, progress onward to the next stage of our mission. 
We found them. The scouts have barely survived the expedition. They lost most of their equipment and resources when their boats sank in the storm. Now they are happy to join us, but they need to be sure we have enough food if they are to be a part of our settlement. They say they can manage on their own for a while and they don't want to be a burden. All right, well, we have 40 food right now, which is actually perfectly fine. So we're just going to invite them to join us. And there we have it. Wonderful. So we now have 10 citizens or actually, wait a minute. We now have much more than just 10. Okay, we got 20 citizens. Whoa, I, okay, okay. Last time I did this, I only got 10. So yeah, anyway, I suspected as much, but our scouts have confirmed it. This is the area. The rebirth power plant is leaking a very specific isotope, non-toxic, so don't you worry, into the waters around here, which proves we're in the right place and it gives us a direction. However, there's a massive swathe of untamed floodland that needs to be combed through. Still, we're closer than anyone has been in over 20 years. All right, here we go. Wonderful. Oh no, oh no, what's actually happening here? We've had our first theft, apparently. Seagulls, they're getting into everyone's food. We need to start making some serious group storage buildings. The food is useless if it's being pilfered, no matter if by man or beast. And yeah, that can actually happen, by the way. If there is unrest within your settlement, people will commit crimes and they can potentially fight each other as well. So you've got to be on top of that as much as possible. Anyway, also we shouldn't be sleeping in the same place where we store the supplies. It's no good for our things or for our sleep. It looks like we're no longer nomads, which means we'll have to start laying down serious roots. All right, thank you very much, Nicole. And now we can actually go into the research tree. So this is absolutely immense, by the way. Don't get overwhelmed, don't worry. Don't get overwhelmed. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory when you get into it, but there is a lot to see here, all right? Anyway. The technology development panel is divided into four categories related to different aspects of your settlement. So for example, there's exploration, growth, survival, well-being. And you also have all of these things as well, which are inevitably going to help you out. So for example, this is in the new start kind of, you know, exploration section here, and we want to get small storage. So we just go here, click on this, and then we've developed it immediately. And then we can also upgrade our small storage. So if I click on upgrade, it will automatically take my camera to that place. And then we can literally just go upgrade to small storage. And then it will do that over a certain period of time. And uh, that's, in my opinion, a very nice quality of life improvement once again, because it, it eliminates the busy work, you know, it eliminates the micromanagement that you would otherwise have to do. Anyway, let's continue onward. It's good that extra people are joining us. Yeah, but the problem is I'm now going to need to build a huge amount of tents. What do you bet? Yeah. Okay, click the clan profile button to get a detailed, yeah, to get detailed information about the clan, as you can see right here. And we've got a good amount of water, food, and our health is relatively decent. However, our unrest is at uneasy at the moment. So I'm a little bit worried about that. Anyway, uh, clan can be banished once you have more than one. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Okay, I'm mm, okay. I, I haven't gotten there before, so that's gonna be that's gonna be wonderful. Anyway, your decisions can raise or lower the unrest of a clan. High unrest means the clan is not happy with the situation in the community and may just demonstrate it in different ways. All right. So yeah, obviously, as you can tell right here, the main problem is that every single one of our people is homeless. They don't have a tent. They don't have any kind of uh, structure to call their own. So the best thing I can do, we actually do have some tarps, but this is just temporary, temporary shelter. So probably not the best thing ever. Um, but yeah, I will attempt to do something here. So there we go. We've actually done that now. And now here we go. Since we turned our encampment into storage, we no longer have a place to sleep. So for now, we've built ourselves provisional tarps. Two steps forward, one step back. I think we should start moving into some serious shelters. Eventually, it'll be a good idea to make it so no one has to sleep out under the stars. However, resources are limited, so it may take some time before we can accommodate everyone. So now we have to provide tents for everyone, and that means going in here, clicking on well-being, and taking a look at this tree. Look at, look at how much stuff there actually is to unlock here. And this is literally just one of them. If I go and collect on... Uh, well, actually, wait a minute. I need to go to the other one, don't I? I need to go to exploration. So you can see here there's even more to unlock up and down here you even have tnt thermite welding torches heavy equipment and so on and so forth there's a huge amount to gain here so anyway let's go into well-being and get the tent 
develop it. And then you can just click on this little button down here that says build it. And then it automatically takes you into the building area. And as you can see, they give you a nice little grid and they give you, you know, everything that you need to know about doing this. So I'm actually going to go and probably build it relatively close to where we were before. We need to build uh, how many? 10, I think. Do we have 10 or do we have 20 citizens? No, we have 20, so that's going to take a long time for us to do that, but we're going to try our best. So let's just build around here. There we go. That's a fabulous start. As said, we'll want housing for everyone, but make sure you focus on food and water first. It's a real Maslow's hierarchy of needs sort of situation. I have no idea what you said, but thank you. Time for a reality check. We knew this wouldn't be a quick camping adventure before we can even start looking for the power plant. We have to think about setting up something more permanent. In other words, getting a supply of rubbish which is obviously used for constructing buildings and so on and so forth. And we also want to do other things as well. So for example, we have small storage here if we want to actually build another one of those. And uh, we also need to upgrade other things. For example, main technology. So this is rubbish. So in other words, providing you the ability to develop technology based on rubbish. So for example, buildings, you know, because you're going to need rubbish to uh, basically, these are things like uh, bricks and plastics and so on and so forth. And you're going to be able to make those into whatever you need. So like, for example, a fishing dock, a forager hut and so on. And I'm going to be going for all of these, I suppose, because this is going to produce uh, food and it's going to be pretty important. We need a water still as well. And we need the fishing dock too. It's going to be pretty important. The field kitchen is going to be really important as well, but we also need growth. We need a sorting hut, don't we? We need the sorting hut, so I'm going to be doing that too. I don't have any more research points, unfortunately, but now we can place something like this over here. Hopefully that's going to work. And then we can also place one over here too. There we go. And that is going to be our uh, place where we can gather ru rubbish, you know. And what's really wonderful actually about rubbish is that it will automatically or it seems to automatically accumulate over time and so you don't really need to be super hard pressed to scavenge it you don't really need to be too worried about that so i'm just going to send out a bunch of search parties right here I'm just going to speed the game up super super hard here as well i really like how fast the game actually runs when you're at its fastest speed because you can see exactly what i've done right now i literally just I, I don't know, I press uh, the fastest speed for, what, I don't know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and it's already to the next day. And that meant that everything is done. All these tents are done. Everyone has gathered stuff. As you can see, we gathered 400, um, 400 supplies of rubbish, which is absolutely fantastic. There's also a boat wreck over here, which we can go and search. Might as well do that. And we have a large, a large ammo pile, I was about to say. No, no, not an ammo pile, but we do have a large pile of something over there. Building remnants, that's absolutely fantastic too. We can get someone else to go over there. Rubbish pile, we can get someone to collect that too. And otherwise, we should be good. I mean, we should be good, but it's very much dependent on a number of factors, of course. So let's just see. Right, okay. So now what we need to do is we need clean water, right? We need clean water. Pretty obvious thing that we need. So let's go for a water still. So water stills are going to be built in shallow water. And I'm probably going to build it somewhere around here. Somewhere like this. We'll just build three of them. I don't know how many we actually need, but I'm going to build three just to be just to be kind of certain. And then we can also build some fishing docks as well. But I don't actually know where the fish are. Oh, there we go. There's one fish. There's two. Okay, so I'll probably place it probably here, I guess. And there's another one over there, but I obviously don't have that, um, <laughs> don't really have that un uncovered right now. It's going to be a little bit harsh for us. Uh, yeah, I also need to get more, uh, more tents up and running as well, but tents are very difficult to get considering I'm building a bunch of other things as well, like getting, you know, getting food and getting water activated, basically. Okay, so if I can go over there, get, get, get some more wood, but wood is not really needed right now, but uh, you know, it, it will surely be needed at some point in the near future. Okay, what's this down here? Pile of rubble, that's going to be necessary very soon. Okay, what's this? Mushroom cluster, yeah, that, that new building that they've just added is going to come in mighty handy for the mushroom collector here. 
So, yeah, okay, well, whatever the case, uh, I don't have any research points. There's the forager hut, so this is going to be super, super useful, actually. And I probably want to build that around about here. Because as you can see, we have two places. Uh, I could build it here instead. Yeah, yeah, I'll just build it right there. That seems like a pretty decent place. And then we'll speed things up, because most people are actually sleeping right now, so we might as well get them to uh, just have a nice little snooze, and then they're going to wake up, and then they'll be fine. They'll be fine to continue working. And hopefully we're going to find enough rubbish, because that's the thing. That's the thing that's holding us back right now. There's there's some more rubbish there. There's another 50 rubbish. We can collect the rubble bricks as well if we want to. Have we already taken a look at this? Yeah, we already took a look at that. Okay, that's absolutely fine. What else do we have here? Uh, more rubble bricks. It's kind of a waste for me to do that, to be honest, but I might as well, right? Might as well. Got some more berries to collect here, so might as well do that too. Just going to have a look around here with the little search icon. Because this is going to enable me to look much, much quicker. Let's just uncover some of this. I can't actually traverse deep water either, by the way. Not until you have uh, boats, I assume. Something along those lines that's probably going to make all the sense in the world for us to, you know, do it then. But I kind of want to uncover various other things in the area. Like, for example, these ruined buildings. I haven't explored that just yet. Ooh, there's a bunch of rubble over there as well. So... Let's actually just send some more search parties out there. And look at that. We already have enough clean water. So as you can see, we have um, enough enough clean water there. I actually could stop the construction on this. I think I will stop the construction on that. And then we will just make sure that the fishing dock gets done. I think that seems like a pretty decent idea. And there we go. We've squared away most of our basic needs. This is a good first step. We can't find anything if we're starving to death or dying of dehydration. After all, civilizations consist of people, and people are biological beings with biological limitations and biological needs. All right, here we go. We need to start applying the scientific method to researching the area. There's a lot of things we could be doing if we had the technology. This area seems to have a lot to offer. Resources, derelicts, also the isotopic runoff, or isotopic runoff from the rebirth power plant has thankfully not killed off the local fish populations. We should, we should start studying everything we can. Provide a place for people to study. All right, so this is obviously the next part of the progression. So we're going to just do this, develop the wood section. Let's go for growth, and then we can now build a study. This is going to be super, super important. So I'm going to try and build that as soon as possible. And we're now getting a nice little auto save right there. There we go. And now let's build that round about there. I should probably build some more, uh, some more tents, to be honest. I think some more tents would probably be pretty useful, actually. Um, and I really need to slow the game down a little bit. Yeah, that would probably be a good idea, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's actually take a look at our clan overview right here. Oh, we're actually peaceful. Everyone's actually pretty happy, surprisingly enough. We do still have people that are homeless, and so I should probably sort that out. So I'm just going to get one more tent. Because it seems like that's all that is actually necessary. Kind of weird. I actually thought I needed more than that, but apparently not. And now all we need to do... Actually, I'm wondering whether I even need an additional water still right here. Because it seems like we don't have any people on this. Which is actually kind of bad. So... Let's do this. There we go. Let's get those people on the fishing hut. And that's hopefully going to get us a nice steady stream of fish to come in. Ah, here we go. Okay, this area is currently unreachable. I'm not sure how that's how that's happened. Uh, it's because these cars are here, I assume. So we can't actually get across, unfortunately. Okay, that's kind of sad. Would have been nice if we could have done that. I, I'm actually kind of surprised that it's unreachable, because I thought that we actually got over there beforehand, but apparently not. Anyway, uh, large rubbish piles, we're getting some stuff from there. It's taking its time, you know, it's taking its time to get over there. It's not too bad. We hopefully will get an increase in our population soon as well. And here we go. Nice, we got our study up and running. So, this basically analyzes old world relics to gain research which can be used to advance technology development, which is super, super important. And I think what I'm actually going to do is... Hmm, it gives a huge amount, doesn't it? It gives a huge amount of rubbish. I'm not entirely sure if we want to do that or we want to just... Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're going to remove people from here? 
Actually, no. Wait a minute. Just finish up. Finish up what you're doing. Uh, no, they stopped working just when it was at 95%. Isn't that always my... Uh, that's always my luck, isn't it? Okay, there we go. They did that. That's fantastic. Now they can go on over here and do this. Okay, that's, that's perfect. So now what they're going to do is they're going to gain some research here. As you can see, they're going to gain some of these. And what's actually going on here? Our food is disgusting. Ah, okay, yes. So what they want to do is they actually want to have me build a field kitchen. Or they want me want to have me research the field kitchen. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Why not? We might as well do that. Ah, so this may sound silly, I know. But you see, I'm a little worried that we have a little gambling plague in the settlement. There's nothing really going on lately. And out of boredom, people have started betting on stupid things. Whether it will rain, how many seagulls they will count on the shore, who will find the biggest mushroom. For now, it's fun, but I think they are starting to take it more and more seriously. I've already heard the first arguments. Perhaps you could intervene before things get... unpleasant? Well... Hmm... Ah, this is a little bit ish... a uh, little bit of an iffy situation. Hmm, I'm gonna say let them bet, but the loser is to give a part of the gains to the common vault. I must say, I like it. We added a lot of resources to the shared pool out of today's bets alone. What's more, people have suddenly become much less eager for such petty gambling. I guess it won't be a problem anymore. However, <laughs> 20 of them have now gotten upset, which I'm not exactly very pleased about. But let's actually just take a quick look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it did add a little bit of unrest to our overall clan, you know, uh, clan attitudes, I suppose you could call it. But... I don't think that's too bad. I think that's all right. I don't, I don't think we should worry about that too much. Okay. So yeah, apart from that, we probably want to try and... Oh, look at how much rubbish is over there. That's actually fantastic. But look at this. We've now got ourselves a facility where some people can call themselves scientists. Well, that's maybe a bit of an exaggeration. Apprentices of science is probably more appropriate. But they are doing science. Working to help all of us with improvements in construction and engineering and, well, everything. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, that's perfect. Now that we've got the beginnings of a real settlement, we need to keep in mind what our end goal is. If we actually find the rebirth power plant, we'll have to run the rebirth power plant. We need to start training people in specialized skills. We'll need people who can work, think, lead, and follow. We've been fighting with sticks for decades. We need to put that behind us. We need to become civilized once again and focus on training people in ways that would be useful for maintaining a permanent settlement or working with technology. You also want to start forging connections between the clans. You're in charge, but the people have their own opinions. They'll make their desires known, and sadly, no one is going to love everything you do. Most of them probably won't even like most of what you do. You'll have to find a way to keep everyone together and focused on the goal. Alright, so these are the new objectives that we now need to do. So set up a specialized work post for people with the fortitude specialization. Set up a learning environment for people to develop their specializations and increase fortitude among people. And also fill one of the specialized work posts. All right, so that's exactly what we're going to attempt to do, of course. Now, I am wanting to get some of the rubbish over here, so I'm just going to send some people over there. As I said before, rubbish can appear pretty much consistently in and around the area. So technically, you don't even need these sorting huts, as far as I'm aware. Technically, you don't need them uh, if you're kind of more active with your search. So I think that's actually quite nice. Anyway, develops technology based on rubble. And you can see here that all of this technology around in the wheel here is going to get unlocked eventually. And it's just going to make it so much easier for you in general. So yeah, anyway, we now need uh, more research points. So hopefully we'll be able to find some more, uh, some more relics. That's going to be extremely important. Yeah, two buildings aren't operational either, but that's perfectly fine. And I'm actually wondering whether we can even get over here. I mean, we obviously can't uh, We can't reach that area because we haven't increased our influence. But yeah, that's not really what we can do anything about. Oh, it seems like we've reached the stock limit of that. Uh, have we built the kitchen, by the way? Did we, did we actually build the kitchen or did we not do that? It seems like I did not do that. I am a bit of an imbecile, apparently. Okay. Well, let me do that real quick. Um, hmm. I need to... Oh, no. I just got another 20 research points. Okay. I say, oh, no, but it's actually good. It is good for me to actually get that. But I am a bit worried about selecting something real bad. Okay, wait a minute. I can get the hacksaw. The hacksaw might be quite useful. 
Uh, we could get small storage. Uh, well, no, we want planks developed, don't we? How do we how do we develop planks? I guess the hacksaw is probably the first. The first. Ah, no, here we go. That's the, there. There we go. There's planks. Okay, I understand. Hmm. What about growth? What else can we get here? We can get the academy, the sorting lodge. That is to collect rubbish and rubble from large deposits more efficiently. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, sure. I don't know whether we should even do that. Supplies with wood. We've got a huge amount of wood right now, don't we? Yeah, kind of. What's this? People gather here to study textbooks in order to raise their respective clan's experience to develop specializations. Okay, that seems like a good idea. Let's get that. Then we also have scholars debate. Following buildings receive a new operation mode. Study, research facility, research institute. And it provides a stable but slow production of research. Okay, sure, why not? Sounds like a good idea. And uh, let's take a look at some of the other stuff. Uh, what about survival? What do we have? Fishing wharf. Needs to be built on shallow... Okay, so this is better. Yeah, so as you can see... This is just a fundamentally straight upgrade from fishing dock all the way to the fishing wharf. Same thing with the forager house as well. So you don't necessarily need to have both of them. And it's a better idea to go for one. And so you probably want to demolish the other one or something like that. We also have a shellfish post. A small but uh, smell recognizable from a distance. Okay, needs to be built on shallow water. Standard operation mode. Okay, yeah. Hmm. I'm not sure about that, actually. What about well-being? Uh, that's just a shack. Okay, I guess we could actually do this. And what do we have? Electrified mode? What is electrified mode? Okay, let's not let's not let's not do that. Just in case, just in case I electrify my own citizens randomly for some reason. Wouldn't want to do that, of course. Let's build a couple of extra of these, a couple of extra of these things, because I don't. I think we don't have any homeless any further, do we? No, we do not. Okay, so that's actually pretty. That's actually pretty perfect. There we go. We already set up a learning specialization for people to develop their specializations, which is really nice. And we can now put this over to Scholar's Debate, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Pretty much perfect. And we, we, yeah, we can check the clan's experience. I actually already checked that. As you can see, we are at 50% of the way along. And we are currently uh, having precision here. You can upgrade skills by gaining enough experience in academy buildings. Ooh, now that's fun. That is really, really fun, actually. Okay, so yeah, this provides a stable but slow production of research, which is exactly what we want. Okay, that's perfect. And we've got way too much rubbish, as you can see. So we now need to actually start using that rubbish. So what are we going to do? Well, we should probably start making some things. So maybe um, get the <laughs> let's get the field kitchen finally, shall we? Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. So let's get that out of the way. I actually really love the way that they have made it so that you can see exactly how many of each building you have. Because I don't know about you, but whenever I'm playing a city builder and they don't tell you how many of one building you already have built, when there's so many different varieties of structures, it's just, well, what am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? I, I, I'm just going to build multiples of the same thing, even though I don't even realize that I've already built that thing. So it's really nice that they give you that readout. Proper meals will let us stay, str stay strong. Yeah, glad we have that new kitchen. Yes, indeed. All right, we're probably going to need to get someone on there. So I'm actually just going to put someone over there. There we go. Let's get someone cooking. We have way too much food and everything. And I have a lot of research points, as you can see as well. So we should probably start getting something else. Maybe I should get the hacksaw. Yeah, why not? Allows to search and deconstruct certain wooden objects. I think that sounds like a pretty decent idea. And you can also go for growth here as well. We could go for the sorting lodge if we want to. I don't think that's particularly necessary, though, is it? I'm thinking maybe the logging hut would probably be pretty good because then it's going to provide us with a steady stream of wood. So I think that could be kind of useful. What else do we have available here? I mean, the fishing wharf is obviously going to be pretty useful in itself because, of course, we're using the fishing dock. So having a straight upgrade to provide us with more food, that can only be a good thing, right? Anyway, I'm just going to allow our people just to do whatever they want to do for the moment. And what else do we have here? Can I actually search this? Yes, we can actually search this. This is actually crazy. So let's do that. This can also be adapted into 
a reclaimed radio tower. Oh yeah. Okay, so I actually wanted to mention that as well. Radio towers can be used to call additional citizens to your settlement. So you can basically, you know, do the, the classic post-apocalyptic thing where you, you know, like you see in movies and things like that, where they have an old radio and they're, they're calling for people on the little walkie-talkie kind of deal. And they say, ah, oh, you know, calling any, any survivors, you know, the zombies haven't gotten you yet, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and that's what I'm talking about here. That's what you can do with this. So this is pretty cool. And obviously, as you can see, you need to finish the prologue to unlock this technology, which is perfectly fine with me. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but we can search it, which is pretty cool because we're now going to get some radio batteries, apparently. So that's going to be kind of nice. Anyway, set up a specialized work post for people with the fortitude specialization. I actually have no idea what that even is, but maybe the shellfish. Maybe that's what that is. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's, let's just build it and see what happens. Okay, so we need to build it on shallow water. So probably build it around about... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are there any pools around here? No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, so we'll just build it somewhere relatively random. There we go. And they're going to go off and do that. And that is good. Okay, so we don't need to do anything else. We've got another five research points. Do I have any abilities to do anything else? No, not really. Uh, I could get um, medical tent. Mm -hmm. Provides people with primary health care, distributes medications to people. Mm, don't really need that so much. Not right now, at least. We probably will at some point. Uh, we have enough rubbish to be able to create a huge amount of different things as well, which is perfectly perfectly fine. So I'm happy with that. And we're also getting some good meals. Uh, my people are studying very, very nicely indeed. We're actually getting 0 0.4 every single day. Hmm. 0 0.4, not so good. We could potentially get one per day if I actually... Uh, let's take that person away from here and put them on this. I think that's probably going to be a little bit more useful. And we can obviously, you know basically just demolish this stuff if we don't want to uh don't want to have it around anymore we could potentially do that too uh our storage is uh, overstocked upgrade it or build a new one to store more resources really do you really want me to build a new one i'm actually not entirely sure whether that's a good idea but sure okay i will build a new one then let's build one round about here on the road i guess that seems like a decent idea but you got to bear in mind the commute the travel time that the citizens are going to have from one place to another, you're going to need to take that into account because otherwise bad things can happen potentially. So, you know, they're going to just, it's just going to take too long. You know, they're just going to take too long to get over there. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to disable a couple of these people and then put some more people on the other one. And hopefully they're going to be able to uh, make good use of it. Actually, we're just going to put five on each. I think that sounds like a pretty good idea. And, oh, we need wood for this. Oh, no, I had no idea. Okay, yeah, we need wood for this, not rubbish. I actually thought we needed wood. I mean, I actually thought we needed rubbish, not wood. Okay, yeah, well, whatever the case, we can just do a couple of very, very quick search, um, search work orders because, as I said before, search is absolutely amazing. Really, really nice and easy for you to be able to gather resources without having to actually build you know, like, a, for example, a lumberjack or whatever. The only time you need to build any structure is if you want a consistent, steady flow of a particular resource. Otherwise, if you, as long as you're on top of things and as long as your citizens are actually listening to you and doing what you think, you know, is a good idea, you're probably going to be able to gain all the resources that you need without too much difficulty. But, of course, don't quote me on that, you know. <laughs> it's very much a case of, well, if it works for me, then it may not work for you and vice versa. Who knows? Anyway... Hopefully my people will be able to uh, get all the wood they need to finish this because there's 600 that it needs, which is actually really, really expensive, or at least I think it's quite expensive, um, but it shouldn't be too bad. We should do absolutely fine. As you can see, we're not doing too badly. As long as that shellfish post is about to be done, then we're going to be able to hopefully um you know fill fill that specialized work post because i think it seems like a specialized work post but maybe i'm wrong about that i don't actually know but we now have 11 so we could go for what about the kitchen we can't do that uh developing planks i need to develop planks to be able to unlock most of this stuff although these things the fishing wharf and, and so on not so much hmm 
could do that. But as you can see, every single building that you need in the future is going to require a certain extra resource. So you're going to need to go through the technology tree. So it's actually really important for you to get more people on this or for you to be able to get old world relics. Those are the things that are going to be the most necessary for you to discover in your time with this game because then you're going to be able to get more research and more research then equals the ability to recover more resources and then you're going to be able to expand even further and it's going to be absolutely fantastic and wonderful and what is this why is there a why is there an exclamation mark ah the area can't be can't be reached okay that's perfectly fine. <laughs> I don't want to force them to go over there and then be like, oh, I can't go over there because I don't have a boat or something. They do actually have a boat, but uh, we don't necessarily, you know, have the technology to uh, expand just yet. Well, we don't have enough people, to be honest, either, because we only have, what, 20 people or something? So, yeah, that's obviously a pretty big deal. There we go. We can actually treat this storage unit as an administrative building. Really? We might try to build a community, a community around it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, well, that's obviously a fantastic idea, potentially. Anyway, I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. And if you would like to check out Floodland, there is a link in the description. Highly recommended to check it out. If you are into city builders at all and a wonderful kind of society rebuilding simulation game, then you really do need to check it out. Otherwise, this big update has definitely made things so much more well fleshed out. And obviously, they were also making sure that all the optimizations and crashes and so on and so forth have been fixed. And I haven't, I haven't experienced any problems. I literally have not experienced any problems whatsoever. Performance has been completely fine. There's nothing more I can say about that. Just check it out. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.